Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to be trying to build a pun generator. And I know that seems hugely ambitious and I, I don't know how far we'll get, but um, bear with me here. The idea of a pun, at least a lot of puns, are wordplay. They're jokes that seem to play on similar sounds. And so I can't start this without looking up a couple puns. Uh, I want to make a joke about sodium, but nah. No, that's more, that's more of a joke, but something like up here, I can't believe how much cereal this holds, a picture of a bowl. Uh, that's more kind of the wordplay I'm going for. Finding words that have similar, but maybe not identical sounds, um, rather than some of these that, that seem to be more jokes than, than puns to me. But, um... What you, what I'm trying to do is find words that have similar, maybe not identical, but similar sounds broken down in pieces. Now, I've seen rhyming dictionaries online, and some of them are very obvious that they, they have a very small sample. You're not going to find uh, very extensive words. Excuse me. Um, you're not going to find long words in there. What you're going to find is, you know, a very tailored, small subset of English words that, that they've kind of manually gone through. Uh, the other type of rhyming dictionaries I've seen are actually pretty problematic as well. They, they look at the ending um, of words. So they look at the spelling and purely the spelling. Uh, for example, um, if you end a word, okay, really, okay, uh, really is spelled R-E-A-L-L-Y, as you can clearly see on the screen, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't rhyme with ally really ally. They look completely different, but if you're purely looking at the spelling, you'll see, hey, these two words end the same way, maybe they rhyme, we'll just spit it out as a result. So, uh, what I found in my, in the vast amount of time I spend uh, just browsing the net is something called the Carnegie Mellon University Pronounci Pronouncing Dictionary. I've never seen one of these, maybe they're super common, but basically, if you pick a word, dictionary, oops, dictionary, uh, they will spell out the pronunciation. It's kind of like, I'm going to call, call it like the international phonetic kind of spelling, but they, they use all kind of basic uh, Roman characters. But you can see, like, D-I-H-K, like, pronouncing it out, dictionary. And if we find something, uh, let's, let's think, uh, regulation, look it up. Um, they will break it out for you. And so if you go on their... Where is it? If you go to their GitHub, you can actually download it. And you can go down the list, and there are just tons and tons of words. Uh, 134,000 words in their uh, in their database, and, and they're all broken down so that we can make pretty easy use of it. Okay, where am I going with this? Well, if I have sounds, and I can spell out, I can take an English word, find out what the sound is, I can compare the sounds to all of the other sounds, and find words that sound similar. Now, the CMU dictionary uh, breaks down all English sounds to 39 uh, phonemes, you know, let's, 
I don't know how to pronounce that, but they must explain it here. Phonemes. Yeah, phonemes. And what I want to do is actually compare them. And uh, there's a couple different things you can look at. Um, I was thinking back to my kind of algorithm courses days, and I remember there was something called word distance. And what it is, is uh, Levenstein distance is just one version of it. But the idea is to compare two different words. So for example, Wikipedia compares kitten and sitting, and they give it a rank of three because it takes three character edits to change. K to S, E to I, and then adding a G at the end. So I was thinking something similar. We can find, uh, you know, between two words, denying and denies, uh, we can kind of find the distance. But what I think, what I think is really important is actually to rank them. And I've been racking my head for, I don't know, a couple minutes trying to remember what it was. I I don't know what the examples were when when I was going through my algorithm courses, but, but there were examples of actually comparing and giving scores as well. So what I mean by that is, for example, um, some letters just don't sound like anything at all. Uh, they sound nothing alike. So if you think f, f sound and an R sound, read and fee, the F and the R sound nothing alike. But if you think about uh, what are similar ones, S and Z, C, Z, you know, the, the shape of your mouth is similar. The sound that comes out is similar. Uh, maybe they should rank quite close. So uh, zoo might be an interesting pun for the name Sue. Zoo, Sue, similar. Um, and same with sounds. Maybe the uh, or sorry, odd to uh, and the uh, at sound is quite different. Uh and ah. But if we're talking about uh and oh, I have no clue if I'm doing these sounds right, but um, you know, similar sounds so that you you remember our little pun here, bowl and b, not not the closest thing, but we can start ranking ranking them. And so I found out that Soundex uh, is you know another one of these algorithms. They don't do vowels very well, and maybe that's why this one kind of works. Uh, vowels aren't so important, but Certain letters are similar. B, f, h, v. The shape of your mouth is very similar. So, so they give a, you know, they classify them all together as one. And so I'm thinking for my algorithm, I might rank two B sounds, identical B sounds to say be a hundred points. But if you're in the same family, B, b and f or b and p, um, I might give it a 75 or an 80, and we can adjust that score a little bit to see um, how to correlate how to correlate them. So that's kind of the approach. Find words that have high scores and rank them down. So we start sound base. We're gonna spit out a bunch of words. And I think there must be some sort of list of famous quotes and sayings and puns and, sorry, not puns, um, idioms. Idioms, sayings, quotes that we can tap into that we can then find our words. So uh, say my name, Anson, sounds a bit like, I have no clue. Uh, sounds something similar and then we f we have a list of words and then we take those words and see if there are any famous quotes any famous idioms and so on and and then we can start generating our puns that's the approach and uh we'll see how far i can get
Just going to check in progress here really quickly. Uh, we spat out our first set of results. Um, I don't like how many 17s are at the end, so I think we may have cut the list short. Maybe I'll do top 1,000 next time. But check out the results. Our test word is hello. Probably could have picked a better word, but all of the top results have great kind of similar sounds. Hello, uh, obviously the same word, matches perfectly, but we have hallucinate, hollow, hollow man. Um, so we have similar sounds, uh, and we're picking up on what's really important. And it's not just the start. So hallucinate, hollow, these all start with the hello type of sound, but you have uh, a hola, uh, aloha, um, maybe that's different word. Um, exhalation. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce this, but alcoholic. Hello, alcoholic. Um, not the best match, but that's maybe rank 60 or so out of the list. But you can actually play around with a lot of these. Holly. Um, holidays. Hello, holidays. Similar kind of sound. And so we go down the list. Um, Maybe top 500 or so might be, eh, let's go top 200 next time, just to give a bit more, um, just to give a bit more, more results. Um, next step is going to be taking each of those words and basically finding quotes, finding idioms that, that match it up. But we have a list of similar sounding words. Guess what? I think we actually did it. Now, there's going to be some tweaking, but let me just explain the process here. Um, what we first did, and you can see me... Uh-oh. Uh, I think we can remove that. Um, what we did was create a couple supporting functions. The first thing I recognized is, of course, we needed to join like sounds together. And what I did was create a sound matrix. You may have seen that I spent like 15 minutes trying to do this on Excel. And, you know, 39 times 39 is, uh, wait, that's like 40 times 40. That's like 1600 squares. That's, that's a ton of data. And I think I was quite naive to think, okay, I'll just leave... Uh, you know, the show running on the side and I'll fill these out. Um, so I wasted, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes trying to do that. Um, what I had to do was create a sound matrix function. And what I did was group together similar sounds, give them a value, and, and create the matrix programmatically. Now, I think there's a lot to this. I... You know, I did a really crappy job of joining similar sounds together, but I think you can tweak it quite a bit. Um, there are definitely groups that I haven't thought of, like N and NG. N and N, uh, very similar. I might give high scores for S and SH to say these are almost identical, same with Z and ZH, rather than one kind of group together. So. There's a lot, there are many more groups that you can make to really fine tune this. But I wanted a proof of concept 
first. So, uh, what do we do? We created a matrix, 39 by 39. Um, basically did two loops and said, if, if these two characters, uh, the two corresponding characters in the matrix, uh, match up to fit one of these groups, then we give it the score, the value that, that is in this, um, that, that's assigned. And then finally we spit out the matrix, and what happens is we printed it out over here. And so, mind-boggling, sort of. Okay, uh, next thing we did. Um, we started writing this find similar words function. Uh, first of all, we took the word that you gave. So, for example, we did hello before, and I'm doing programming as my next choice. I put it into a function. Um, I find the word first. Find it in that, um, in that dictionary. Get the word and get the pronunciation. So pron is pronunciation list. Uh, I don't have an example, but it's just a list of A, A, Z, Z, H, K, whatever it takes to, to, to make out the sound of that word. Then I compare it with each line of this dictionary. I just go all the way down this list and compare that sound with each one. Uh, and I give it a score. I just compare the two sounds. Uh, I compare the two pronunciation uh, lists, each one, and give it a score. If it's high enough, then I put it into the, well, I put it all into the results list. At the very end, I just sort from highest score to lowest score, and I take the top 150 results. Um... There's probably a better way to do it, but all we do for the comparison of the sound is actually move these. So this is quite similar, but basically I try to compare this over here for the first, what is that, six letters, and then the last six letters. And if this was longer, I might shift it one more and one more and one more and basically keep making that comparison and seeing what sounds the most similar. Finally, now that we have a list of similar sounding words, I just go through our giant quote database, our giant quote data set, and find quotes with those words. And so over here, um, I use the word programming. Uh, proclamation, I, that's, that's a bit difficult. I don't think that's the best one, but progressive certainly sounds a bit like programming. Program, program, progressive. Um, I don't know why autobiographical uh, is in there. That's probably a bad match. But again, you can definitely tweak the sound matrix, make it more, uh, make the values more granular, make them more accurate. But basically, I start searching. And so, for example, progressive. 60 years ago, I knew everything. Now I know nothing. Education is a progressive discovery of our own ignorance. Uh, the idea is maybe we put programming in here instead. Uh, not, I'll admit this is not best. And I also think these quotes are just too wordy. Um, I'm looking for like idioms. I'm looking for something shorter, but on a quick search, this is a really good database to start from. Um, and that's basically it. This is a proof of concept. It takes about, I'd say, four or five minutes to run with just one word. Um, we have a massive dictionary and a massive quote data set, so it's not, it's not too bad, actually, four or five minutes. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. I I actually think it's pretty cool. There, I I had to go through a couple of different loops. I had to think about this algorithmically a bit. All done in the most naive possible way. But computers are fast enough. Why why rack my brain over trying to to make this more efficient? Um, I will be putting this up on um on GitHub. So if any of you guys want to tackle creating better sound matrices or something like that to to make it um 
to 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 do something more granular to make it more accurate, find a better quote data set. Uh, I actually think you can probably make something useful out of this. Uh, the results are very promising for, I think, maybe an hour and a half, to maybe two hours of work. So, uh, pun generator, I'm going to call it a success. Um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys can make some punny jokes afterwards. Uh, I have never been very good at that. That's why I need a generator. I need something that will work on my phone so I can kind of just do it on the side, figure it out, uh, figure something clever out to say. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Add to comments below. Thumbs up. Subscribe. If not, let me know as well. Constructive criticism is always very welcome. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned next week for another episode of Unscripted Coding.